right, let's go. They started, they started. Than last time. Sorry. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's debate. Um, I'm sorry we're running late. It's the comedy debate, and so everyone is drunk. Um, <laughs> super. <laughs> All right. So the motion before the House tonight is uh, this House prefers a woman on top. As week five begins, uh, sorry, <laughs> switch places. That's my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm about to kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not just five. Yeah, so anyway, as, as week five begins, uh, we thought we'd start with some light relief. If you're joining us on the live stream, tonight, uh, tonight's hashtag is CUS Woman on Top. Uh, remember to tweet at Cambridge Union with your comments or questions, and I will try to read them out in the pauses if they're funny enough. Uh, if you would like to contribute to tonight's debate, the instructions for how to do so are on the back of your order paper, but in short, you can stand up during any of the speaker's speeches and say something like, on that point, or point of information, up to the speakers whether or not they accept you. Uh, if they do, you have sort of 15 to 30 seconds to uh, make your point before sitting down. If they say no, please just, just sit down. Um, we will also do two rounds of floor speeches between each pair of speakers, so that's another chance to get involved. Uh, if you are called on, please wait for a microphone to get to you from one of the stewards and then say your name and college for the minute book. So, without any further ado, I'd like to call upon the first speaker for the proposition, Samantha Baggins. Samantha is an award-winning comedian and actor. Uh, she writes for The Guardian, Time Out, and The Huffington Post. Samantha. Yeah, yeah. Hello, I'm TV Samantha Baines, um, <laughs> currently in the crown. So um, before I start, I just wanted to say this is a really lovely gig. I think all the comedians coming in were like, oh, intelligent people. Because we, <laughs> yeah, we gig all over the country and it's not always nice. Like I did a gig the other day and my face was on the flyer, fancy. And they put a banner across my forehead that said, free entry. <laughs> which is quite apt. Uh, I also like that you have unisex toilets because while I was weeing, I got to hear a man discuss with another woman whether they recognise me from Call the Windwife or not. <laughs> so that was nice too. Um, okay, so this house prefers a woman on top. I think the use of this house has never been more apt as that's where <laughs> women have been kept for centuries. And before that, caves. <laughs> but this cave prefers a woman on top. Doesn't really have the same ring to it. And sounds like a euphemism for my cavernous vagina. <laughs> so, uh, Wikipedia defines a woman on top. Woman on top is also called the cowgirl or riding position. It's a group of sex positions in which the man lies on his back or sits. The woman straddles him, facing either forward or back. And the man inserts his erect penis into the woman's vagina or anus. The latter is more of a knees-up situation, if you tried it. The cowgirl name, so early on, anal reference. The cowgirl name <laughs> derives from the image of the receiving partner riding their partner as a cowgirl rides a bucking horse. It's fairly simple to achieve and maintain. <laughs> Clearly written by a man. <laughs> and pleasures both partners. This position is also used as a precursor to the lateral coital position described by Masters and Johnson, which is essentially a deep lunge on top of your partner. <laughs> if you're not aware, some of you don't look like you are. And, <laughs> and it's preferred by 75% of heterosexual participants in studies. Wikipedia goes on. <laughs> this position, woman on top, is commonly cited as one of the more popular sex positions, especially by women, because of its ability to adequately stimulate the clitoris, which, let's face it, ladies, isn't adequately stimulated at the best of times. <laughs> In this position, the woman is usually the active partner during the sexual activity. Because normally we're inactive, right? 
Oh, lie back and think of England. Oh, Brexit. <laughs> Ah, oh, Theresa May. <laughs> oh, long passport cues at Heathrow. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> so thanks, Wikipedia. Uh, I, I did want to point out that when I googled women on top, nine out of the ten listings were about sex. I feel sorry for young girls googling women on top and expecting to find tales of success and new female role models, but instead being greeted on Wikipedia with a cartoon of a couple having sex in which the woman has bikini tan lines, <laughs> which seems a strange detail to add. <laughs> But Wikipedia, the conclusion for so many arguments and yet banned from most essay referencing, does tell us that Women on Top is commonly cited as one of the more popular. And the lateral coital position studied by Masters and Johnson, which you can reference in an essay, <laughs> was preferred by 75% of participants. So when it comes to sex, the majority prefers Women on Top. Probably because you like us to do all the work. And we like it because we get a better view. It's like being upgraded to the penthouse suite, <laughs> if that involved having an iron core and strong thighs. <laughs> but it's not, it's not all about sex, which I'm sure those hoping to get a first class degree have realised. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the, one, uh, the one Google reference that didn't refer to cowgirling it up was Woman on Top, the 2000 film starring Penelope Cruz <laughs> and directed by Fina Torres. Don't worry, no one else saw it either. <laughs> <laughs> Tells us so much. Um, this film, this film, Women on Top, this film teaches us that if you run away to New York and piss off a Brazilian sea goddess, your town will stop catching fish. But cooking a meal with your ex can help you get back together. So lots of salient points there. <laughs> to be clear, This House Prefers a Woman on Top is not referencing this film. Uh, well, unless you're saying, which do you prefer, this film with Penelope Cruz or a knight typing up Trump's thoughts on women's roles unedited? <laughs> and I think even Trump would prefer the former. <laughs> Look, we all prefer women on top in so many aspects of life. Toilet roll holders, yeah? So much better with a doll woman on top with a pretty knitted skirt that covers the toilet roll. Because toilet roll is obviously offensive to the eyes and must be covered at all times. However you feel about toilet roll, a man in a doll, a man doll in a suit and trousers and a big chairman of the board ego on top of shit wipes <laughs> just wouldn't work, would it? And it's not just sex and toilet rolls. Human pyramids. <laughs> they prefer a woman on top. We tend to be lighter and more flexible and thus less strained to the rest of the pyramid team. <laughs> we are the first to fall, but hey, the Bible predicted that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that man. <laughs> and so, but, you know, let's, let's see what some men think. Uh, maybe someone revered, one of the great masters, Michelangelo. Michelangelo preferred women on top. Literally, just look at the Sistine Chapel. Yeah. Okay, the focus is to men, but Michelangelo included tons of female references. He's a bit of a lady fan. Ram's heads for uteruses, fertility symbols are plenty. According to academics, Michelangelo idolized all teachings associated to the sacred femi feminine. And he spent a lot of time up a ladder, so he's used to being on top. There's also The Birth of Venus by Michelangelo, which featured a pale naked lady standing in a shell with flame-colored hair. She's covering her modesty with her hair and her hand, but she is letting one cheeky breasticle hang free. <laughs> Just for those show us your tits hecklers. <laughs> yeah, they have them in art galleries as well. Her shell platform with hair aflame is clearly a statement about oil company shell ruining the world. <laughs> he was ahead of his time. So if you, if you vote against our motion, you're supporting shell. <laughs> 
Let's look at female leaders of countries. I think we'll all agree that the best example is Laura Roslin, the president in Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> a female president and a female hero, and they both lead the human race to safety and prosperity. Spoiler alert. So <laughs> I mean, okay, we could consider Theresa May or Margaret Thatcher, but we only have like two options and it's not really fair. It's like saying, I don't like comedy based on watching two comedians, one of which was covering for another comedian who pulled out of the gig at the last minute. <laughs> there is, of course, Hillary Clinton. Who's worried about her emails now? <laughs> if you vote against our motion, you're voting for Trump. <laughs> You're as bad as the Americans. Are you American? Yeah. Sauce babe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there are also female leaders of companies, and not just cosmetic companies. Actually, cosmetic company Mac was founded by a man, so stop being so gender stereotyped, Sam. Um, Kelly, Kelly McElhaney, a professor at Haas School of Business's Center for Responsible Business, Try saying that after a bottle of champagne. <laughs> she found that companies with a higher female representation on their boards tend to give higher priority to environmental and social issues. Yeah, it's not just superman who saves the world. It's women in leadership. <laughs> so if you vote against our motion, you hate the environment and encourage violence in schools. <laughs> Also, a 2015 study by Credit Suisse shows that the positive correlation between female leadership and financial performance. Yeah, we were all inspired by Meryl Streep in questionable dungarees singing money, 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 must be funny in a rich man's world. Money, 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 always sunny in a rich man's world. Who doesn't want a piece of that? Between 2005, uh, 2005 and 2013, firms with more than one woman on the board returned a compound interest of 3.7% a year over those with no women. Yeah, even the stats prefer women on top. So just to cover all bases, um, this house also prefers women on tops and women in tops. <laughs> Sorry, Michelangelo's Venus. Um, these days, we mainly cover up our pomegranate. My dad wrote a porno reference. Anyone listen? Your mum does. It's worth knowing. Um, <laughs> we, may, we mainly cover them up with tops. And uh, if you don't prefer women in tops, you are subjecting us to a life of tit pneumonia <laughs> and prodding, which just isn't practical. In meetings, if you were nude, you'd just get like... Particularly in a meeting with your dribbly, decaying chairman of the board, who's so old, he doesn't have enough energy to wank anymore, but is somehow still in charge of a company. <laughs> We've all seen them. Uh, also, Che Guevara and Bowie side, we also love having women on our t-shirts. Sadly, I couldn't find any statistics on this one. Um, so if anyone is looking for a dissertation subject, we should chat. To conclude, uh, statistics and pleasureometers show that we prefer women on top when it comes to sex. We've agreed to never mention the film again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we prefer women on top of toilet roll, pyramids, and ceilings of chapels. We prefer women to run futuristic societies and lead the human race to safety. We prefer Hillary Clinton. We prefer women on top as they make more money and save the world. And we also like women in tops and on tops. You. And if this whole time you've been sort of straining to see me, you want to see what shoes I'm wearing, you want to see my whole dress, you would have preferred me on top of something as well. <laughs> so, vote that you prefer women on top and don't be like Trump. And next time I'm here, please be wearing t-shirts with my face on. <laughs> Thanks. Um, for anyone who hasn't clocked, the loud, drunk woman that Kira is now sitting on is my mother. Um, so as you can see, I didn't come out of nowhere. 
Um, so now, moving to the opposition, our first speaker is Athena. Athena is a stand-up comedian, a 2015 BBC New Comedian of the Year finalist, and a regular performer at the Brighton and Edinburgh Fringe. Athena. Thank you. Cambridge. Before I start, I just have to get something off my chest. Um, you told me to come here in black tie. And then you served me Prosecco. <laughs> I thought I'd get champagne, guys. <laughs> I'm wearing... <laughs> yeah, well, it tastes like Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, why, this is why I'm here, right? Let me start. I'm against this, what is it, a proposition? I've never done a debate before, by the way, which is a bit unfair, I think. But, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this house does not prefer a woman on top, quite clearly. I do like you though, you're lovely, I just met her, she's lovely. Um, no, no, I, I, this house is not preferred a woman on top. First of all, there is a reason why women live longer than men. They've been on top, it's too stressful. Being on top sucks, okay? When you're on top of things, you've got the furthest to fall. Right? I ain't giving up my five and a half years for nobody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> do one, all right? Because you're, you're more likely to be on top, you're more likely to die young, okay? You're more likely to get assassinated like Scarface. Uh, beheaded, like William Wallace, um, or like they might put you on a zip wire and make you wave flags like Boris Johnson. I ain't, I ain't doing it. And it's, men have been on top for a while, and it's safe to say the person on top doesn't make decisions, okay? The person on top gets blamed for them. Again. Um, <laughs> it's, a poison, it's a poison chalice. We can blame men for the state of the world. Ladies, it's amazing. The world is a terrible, terrible place. But guess what? We get to sleep at night. It's not our fault. It's not a fault, I'm sorry, like, we was on the Manhattan Project. We did loads of things. Did we start the war? No. <laughs> did we press the button? No. Like I said, we sleep at night. Remember, it, there was a movie once by an, which an actor called Steven Seagal, who you don't know was in, and he said something, right? And you won't know this because you're too young. But he said this, I'm just a cook. <laughs> We're just cooks. Do I get to accept this? Because you're the first guy, I allow it. Go on. Oh my God, I feel so young. <laughs> bless you. God bless that man. What, what's your name, child? God bless Sam. Amazing. We're just the cooks, though. We're just the, being on. God, listen, ladies, we don't want to be on top. When you're on top, what you get is you get the baton of history. Keep the baton. It's a fucking burden, all right? It's a burden. You have the burden of colonialism. That's right, guys. It was a man. In fact, a bunch of men that was like, that's a nice ocean. We'll take it. <laughs> what? As a woman, we'll take your duvet. We'll take your shirt. We don't need the ocean or the mountains or the people. We're fine. As a man. It was men that caused the financial crisis. We know this. It was a man. It was men. They was like, you know what? That's a nice super yacht. We'll take 10. Because <laughs> they've got oceans in it, so they need the yachts. <laughs> so, um, Men, you've got the burden of the X factor. That's a man's fault. <laughs> you, can cut, you can keep that shit. We don't want it. It was a man that invented the X factor. It was a man that made Honey G. All right? <laughs> Women are amazing, we are amazing, but you put us in charge of that show, we can't save it. There's nothing, there's nothing we possess, there's nothing in our ovaries, our fallopian tubes, our nail extensions, we can't save that show, we're working from the same raw materials as you, it's done. Just watch um, the new one, whatever that is. Um, being on top is very overrated, okay. Men have always said, you know what, if you want to be in control, you have to be on top. That is a goddamn lie, all right. If you want to be in control, you've got to be unseen, okay? You don't want to be the person taking the questions, all right? You want to be the person pulling the strings, like her. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll put this, this is how I'll prove this point, because that's what we've got to do in the bait, we've got three points. Um, would you rather be, <laughs> I'm learning it. I thought, do we, do we get degrees if we win? <laughs> I don't, is that what we get? Uh, I could do with a degree right now, to be honest. Um, okay. You, would, you need to be the person pulling the strings. Would you rather be Barack Obama, who was the former leader of the free world, or would you rather be the current and forever leader of the former leader of the free world, Michelle Obama? 
I would take her shoes, thank you very much. They say behind every great man is a better woman, and they're right, um, but it doesn't work in reverse, so why would we want that deal? Okay, the lesser known phrase is that behind every great woman is a man who wants to betray her, okay? <laughs> Cleopatra, everybody, thank you. Joan of Arc, Jennifer Aniston. I want my man where I can see him, which is up there, all right? You've got to fear the Greeks, right, when they come bearing gifts. I got that from the movie The Rock, but I think it's a, a more famous... <laughs> I think there's a more famous person that said that, I don't know. Um, I'm suspicious of men who want us to be on top. When a man wants a woman in charge, it means they've messed up and they need us to clean up, all right? Has anyone seen Michael Gove recently, or Boris Johnson, or David Cameron? I don't know. Being on top wouldn't make you guys meet to treat us more fairly. It wouldn't, man. When you're on top as a woman, you have to do things men on top don't have to do, okay? Theresa, jo Theresa May never wore red in her life. And then she met Trump, and she had to look sexy, and hold his hand. Could you imagine David Cameron <laughs> holding Donald Trump's hand <laughs> in a red dress? With a nice black, actually, I can see that. I, don't, it's just, I, can, I can see that. This is, I've got a message for all the men who want women on top. Be careful what you wish for, okay? You do not want women on top because we'd be far too good at it. We'd be good at it, man. And the thing about being good at being on top, it means we win arguments, all right? And do you know what happens when men lose arguments? They go on Twitter. <laughs> and they get embarrassed by J.K. Rowling, so. <laughs> Look, we'd be better CEOs, we'd be better world leaders, we'd be better hosts of Top Gear. But I'm going to tell you this. This is a secret, but I didn't know this was going to be live streamed, so this is going to ruin the secret. Um, we don't want to reveal our superiority just yet. We don't want to reveal it. Men are doing a really good job at being bad. <laughs> Start the wars between Russia and North Korea. I think you should ruin the Great British Bake Off by following the money and not the bread. Uh, Run Southern Rail into the ground. You, know, you guys don't hate trains, but they're things that you take when you're poor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because when you're weak, we will initiate our plans and create a new world order. But not yet, ladies, not yet, okay? So we don't prefer a woman on top yet, but I'm going to end on this. I speak from experience. I've been on top on a few occasions. The position is only desirable if there was something worth being on top of. <laughs> and whilst the world is going to shit, I think I prefer a man on top of me for the time being. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, and while half my committee and one of the speakers goes missing, it is time for a round of floor speeches. So if anyone would like, would like to make a speech in favor of the proposition. All right, for the record, the rest of you are misogynists. Since this is the comedy debate, I won't embarrass my college. I thought, this was going to <laughs> I thought this was going to be another debate about the American election. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be about sex. <laughs> well, Madam President, I lost my virginity on my back. It was quite a while before I discovered that there were 68 other ways of doing it. <laughs> My girlfriend at the time was American. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't a cowgirl. I think she was studying to be an accountant. <laughs> well, American women seem to like being on top. <laughs> Madam President, <laughs> if your young English friends aren't willing to cooperate, Come and talk to me after the debate. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll 
Esther, you know who to fight. Um, <laughs> cash my mom outside. <laughs> So, moving on now. Uh, anyone who would like to make a point for the opposition of the motion? You all love women on top. I attend this university and I doubt that very much, but thanks, team. Ooh, yeah. All right, uh, no one has a point in opposition of the motion? All right, finally, a point in abstention. Please do not let the only floor point this evening be someone coming on to me. <laughs> Caleb, that guy. <laughs> so right now I'm feeling like voting an extension because I have a question I feel needs to be answered. If someone is able to answer it, maybe I'll vote for them. There to my left is a certain Irish Lothario, um, a Mr. Alistair Donovan. Um, so when Kate first met him, she was a powerful union hacked and he was just a bright-eyed fresher, you know, young to the world, <laughs> unsure what life was really about. So oh, I think me. the key question that we have to ask is, how does a woman on top affect the crucial power dynamics of cougar love play? <laughs> I really regret letting you come this evening. <laughs> Move <laughs> <laughs> Moving on now, uh, back to the main debate. Speaking second in proposition, we have Harriet Kemsley. Harriet is an award-winning comedian who's performed on The One Show and Radio One Comedy Lounge, and as a supporting act for Stephen Merchant and Catherine Ryan. Harriet. All right, hi guys. You're fun, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> it's nice to be here. I never imagined myself at Cambridge. It's cool. Like, I didn't, didn't really pay attention in school. Instead, I'd, I'd sit in home economics. If you don't know home economics, it's like economics, but for girls. You know, like you learn how to bake a cake and cover a black eye. You know, all the essentials. Right. This, this woman, prefer, this house prefers a woman on top. Right, a quick caveat, it doesn't necessarily prefer that woman to be Theresa May or Margaret Thatcher or Marine Le Pen, okay? It would much prefer like Mary Berry or Beyonce. <laughs> and it doesn't believe that all women should be on top. Some women, like men, like some men, like Hitler, for example, should step away, like leadership is not for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not saying that I should be in charge of anything ever, right? I've had chlamydia, you know, like I can't even, I can't even protect or rule my own vagina. Like I should not be on top, but I can't even get through a debate at Cambridge Union without saying vagina. So I, I should not be on top, but, but there's some really awesome women that, that should be. And general underlying sexism that seeps down from the top affects women every day. Like makeup, like I spend so much money on like hair products and makeup and like mascara and like I can't even afford rent. Like if the price of mascara goes up anymore, I'm just gonna be the most fuckable homeless woman going. <laughs> and, like, and like the media, like it's so shit. Like Jennifer Aniston recently had to come out and say that she wasn't pregnant, right? Because every, every month like the press takes a picture of her because like she had a big lunch and like says that she's pregnant. Like I'm just so lucky that I'm not famous. Because if I was, the paparazzi would be like, Harriet Kemsey seems to be in her second trimester for about three years now. <laughs> that is confusing. So if we look at the world right now, we need a change. It's been led by men for so long and no offense, but you've really fucked it. Right, we're surrounded by poverty, inequality, war, and the very real, not fake news threat of global warming. Having a woman in power is not the norm around the world, but maybe the world would be better if it was. Right, I went to the Women's March in January. Did anyone go give me a cheer? <laughs> One woman? Uh, great, great, that's good, you know. I don't know if you're meant to get people to cheer in a debate. I don't know, I feel like I've made this into like an open mic night in Romford. Um, but thank you. Anyway, it was amazing, like it was so full of hope. And what was really striking was it was so peaceful. There was no violence, nothing got smashed. They were just like really awesome outfits and like really cool signs. And I started volunteering at a food bank recently and it's 90% women because I believe women generally care more 
or they feel more guilt. I'm not sure. But the male voice has been the norm for so long, and it means the areas that affect us get missed. And like things like sexual harassment, maternity leave, the female orgasm, because these things don't directly affect the men who are making the laws. These are things that don't even cross men's minds. Like the fear we are walking of like walking home alone at night, the low ra rape conviction charges stop women from speaking out, and like the fact that men never think about this is because like they never think that they might not always be right. Our expectations and approaches are different, right? As the Iron Lady herself said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Ask a woman. Because <laughs> we can do stuff like read, guys. Uh, right? She also, she said, it may be the cock that crows, but it's the hen that lays the eggs. Like, I just love that she said that same point twice, but one involved a chicken. <laughs> it just makes it so much better. But it means that women get shit done, right? It's a shame that those eggs led to such poverty for so many people, but <laughs> lay those eggs she did. She also said, right, there's no chickens in this bit, but she said, you might have to fight a battle more than once to win it, and I agree, like, we need more than one woman. We don't just need a woman at top. We need a woman beneath her, and a woman beneath her, maybe. The more different women in power in different walks of life in different positions, the more we can disprove the theory that powerful women are icy and tough ball breakers, or that they're weak and emotional crybabies. Like, we have to take our chances where we can, like sneaking in where a man's messed up, which means in four years, there's real hope for America. <laughs> the election of Donald Trump has just proved what a misogynistic world we live in, proving that rather than a woman, some people would just prefer a moron, you know? <laughs> and like, I really love the phrase that you can't be what you can't see. For instance, now there are amazing female comedians, like the ladies here tonight, and like Catherine Ryan and Sarah Pascoe, and I host an open mic night, and there's been a swell of women like, starting to stand up, and that's because they've started to see it. And panel shows, like, they have to have a woman on now because it's, like, the law, right? But they found a loophole, right? They don't have to put, like, a comedian on. They can put, like, a weather presenter on or something, like a female weather presenter. Then afterwards, everyone will be like, well, women aren't funny, but they sure know the weather, you know? <laughs> But it's important that women can see like these role models so young girls can see it and think, I can do that. Like, Theresa May started her political career after Thatcher was in power, and her mother was a strong supporter of the Conservative Party, but it wasn't until after a female prime minister was in power that May entered politics. If 50% of our population are being kept down by the system, then we're losing so much talent and so many different perspectives. And I think that right now, there might be a woman watching May and thinking, I can do that too, hopefully better. And I am so sorry for all the men here watching this debate this evening and thinking debating is only for women. Guys, that must be hard for you. <laughs> Joke, men think they can do anything. Um, but it's only through more women getting to the top that the culture and hopefully the world can begin to change. Thank you. To be perfectly clear, debating is only for women, and I am icy and a ball breaker. <laughs> Moving on now to our, first uh, to our next speaker in opposition, we have Jamie McGrath. Jambi is a Kenyan-born, UK-based comedian, voted one of five top up-and-coming com female comedians in 2012 by Fabulous Magazine. She has performed numerous Edinburgh shows to critical acclaim. Jamie. First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Yes, I, I am indeed from Kenya, and uh, I have been here for a while, and it's very commendable that you should invite an African to take place, to take a stand, actually. When I got the email to attend this, it said, follow in the footsteps of Winston Churchill. And I thought, finally, an African gets to colonize white people. <laughs> and, <laughs> It is very bizarre for me to come here and talk, uh, first of all, being an immigrant, because obviously they say that we immigrants don't integrate. Let me reassure you that my husband is English. I integrate every night. <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes I include him. <laughs> uh, 
and that is a good reason why you should not have a woman on top because uh, he gets to wear the trousers at home. He doesn't know he's, you're, you're laughing at his expense. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's good. Uh, <laughs> So basically, I oppose this motion that a, a woman, you know, that the motion says that a woman should be on top. Women are fed up of being told where to be, <laughs> unless, of course, Christian Grey is involved, <laughs> in which case I'm your bitch. Uh, <laughs> see, the thing is, women have been oppressed for so long that we actually now are good. You, you can keep the high places, men, uh, because they say that uh, behind every successful man is a woman but nobody ever actually says what the woman is doing at the back. <laughs> she could have had, I don't know, a rod shoved up his ass. <laughs> Who knows? Because we have, we have developed ways of keeping men in check, right? We know what to do. Like, uh, and this is worldwide. Women are subjugated around the world. Now, I, I'm, I'm from Kenya, and uh, amongst my tribe to people, as we find out, found out the other day, I took my husband to Kenya, lucky man, and... Um, I usually keep him away from my tribespeople, not because I think he'll colonize them, but, <laughs> but it, it is because they give him ideas that I would rather he doesn't find out. Like they said that uh, the way to keep a woman, a man happy, basically, the way my tribe um, keeps a man happy is basically to keep his stomach full and his balls empty. So as you can imagine, being the man on top, he was very excited, and he said, yeah, let's go tribal. Um, to which I said, uh, have your dinner. I gave him a big plate of dinner and a big glass of beer, and then I showed him the credit card bill, and that emptied his bowls. <laughs> See, the thing is, well, women have been oppressed for so long that the only women that get to the top are like a hybrid between um, a dragon and a dragon. <laughs> Seriously, don't tell me that if you're having a bad day, you'll go to Theresa May for a hug. <laughs> and the thing is, the women that actually get to break the glass ceiling, it's, it's not even the women who break the glass ceiling, it's the men around them trying to get away. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and I'm a feminist and I'm doing this, bitch, I'm selling my soul. <laughs> So the thing is, like, with the women that get to the top are seriously scary, right? Uh, apparently, <laughs> other than you, you're so beautiful, and I, I love your shoes, by the way. Uh, um, the, the women that actually get to be on top are seriously scary, and uh, apparently the submarines don't actually work, and none of the men could face Theresa May to tell her the submarines don't work. Right? <laughs> you can just imagine all these army men going, no, you fast, no, you fast. <laughs> I told her last time, you go. <laughs> See, men are helpless when they're below. They don't know what to do because women are just too scary. <laughs> It is so true, though. Ma Margaret Thatcher, obviously, uh, she was called the Iron Lady. Now, my mother thought that the reason she was called the Iron Lady was because she did the ironing. <laughs> How ironic. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, she closed the mines uh, up north, and uh, she was absolutely hated up north, not because the men cared for the mines. They couldn't give a toss about digging in the mines. It is because she took away their only places of hiding. <laughs> And the thing is, yeah, I don't, you obviously remember Margaret Thatcher used to carry a handbag, and uh, it's not for fashion. She only wanted something handy so that she could smash the balls in her way. And, um, uh, the thing is, like, when women are in power, they are actually very scary. You probably have never heard this because all hist history from Africa has been whitewashed. But there was uh, the women warriors of the Dahomey Kingdom. I don't know if any, but you, you're clever people. You, well, some of you must be doing history, surely. Uh, no, not African history, <laughs> no. Um, but the women of the Dahomey Kingdom were the world famous warriors, and these women were shrewd and feared. Basically, they could slice off somebody's head in just one quick move. Uh, they would teach ISIS a thing or two. <laughs> and actually, actually, the reason they don't exist anymore is because the French heard about them. They were so scared, they went and shot them all dead, thanks to the French. Uh, <laughs> and of course, we can't talk about the French without thinking about the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, we all know the Statue of Liberty. 
uh, obviously, I, I've, I've seen it. Anybody seen the Statue of Liberty? Oh, just the American. Oh, me! Uh, <laughs> Yeah, those of you that have never seen the Statue of Liberty, it's pretty. <laughs> See, men get nervous when a woman is on top. <laughs> Control yourselves. <laughs> it's all right, calm down, dear. So the Statue of Liberty is pretty awesome. It's this female figure with a headgear, long flowing robes, probably why the French got rid of it. They thought he was Muslim. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true, you know it's true. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is that the women are so strong and they know what to do. The only reason why Theresa May flew to, um, to America to talk, to, uh, not to talk to Donald Trump, to see Donald Trump was basically not to talk to him, but to, to size him up. He was the only reason why she was holding his hand, A, to stop her from grabbing the pussy. But <laughs> <laughs> but also she wanted to really confirm the size of his hands just in case there was a bitch slap. <laughs> now, <laughs> Obviously, we cannot think uh, of women who have been held down despite their hard work. And one of those women was Winnie Mandela. Winnie Mandela was, was a woman that did, did all the groundwork. And I'm sure we all re remember Winnie Mandela. Yes. And of course, Nelson Mandela, he was a good man. He stood up against tyranny and oppression. And uh, they threw him in jail 27 years. He did for his people. And M Winnie Mandela, you know, did a lot in the background. And of course, when Nelson Mandela was in prison, they tortured him, they beat him, they did everything that was horrible to him. And when times were hard, all he had to do was reach into his back pocket, pull out a picture of his wife, Winnie, and remind himself why prison was better than home. <laughs> we do have a voice, you know. <laughs> you should let us have a space in, this, in the United Nations. We can talk, you know. Um, so uh, we all know that a woman's place in the kitchen, obviously, but uh, nobody really says what the woman is doing in the kitchen. <laughs> Revenge doesn't cook itself. Uh, <laughs> um, you guys have been amazing, and thank you so much for the stage time. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now for another round of floor speeches, which hopefully will be less like pulling teeth than the last one. So, if anyone has a point in proposition of the motion. Kier. Ella, do, do you know who I am? Are you the president of Student Minds Cambridge? I think, uh, I'm not anymore, darling. The former president oh. of Student Minds Cambridge. <laughs> That's hot. Uh, Emmanuel, I think. Kia? I just like to say, considering how excited I can see Owen, who even though he looks like a 10 year old boy, is still flushing deeply, I think having, having a woman insult him clearly and. James, you clearly are. <laughs> I made him do that. <laughs> it was me mainly so I could get the microphone and kind of share a bit more of the spotlight. And now I'm going to sit down because it's great. Woo! <laughs> All right. Thanks. A point in opposition of the motion. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Do we have a mic up? Yeah, yep. there we go. Yep. Go for it. AB have our own mics. Go us. Um. <laughs> okay, so I was telling my friend. Name in college. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kira Keys. Um, I was talking to my friends back home and I said, hey, we're having a debate at the union tonight. And they were like, oh, wow, what's, what's it on? And I was like, well, this has prefers a woman on top. And after the few minutes of, wait, but this is, this is Cambridge, isn't it? Like, is, you're doing a, a debate about woman on top? And finally, my friend said, she, she's got a point in opposition, actually. Hey, he's the one invading your property. He should do all the work. That, that's what I've been told by people back in Gloucester. 
So there is a point of opposition. Thank you. <laughs> and now a point in abstention. Any, yeah, there you go. Uh, can someone want a mic? So pass it along if you're in that row. Get involved. Go on, keep going. No, along, along. There she is. Hi, um, Kate Newnham. Um, and I, I feel a bit confused because like, the proposition is this house prefers a woman on top, but it doesn't necessarily mean a man instead. Um, and I mean, I don't know if you've seen, like, I, I feel like we're all a bit sort of cock-ups. Um, and I don't know if you've seen like Britain's Got Talent and they have dogs that can like walk. Um, and they've been to space and stuff. It's just an alternative. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. People named Kate are fantastic. All right, so returning then to tonight's debate, we have Max, Max Campbell. He has stepped in at the last minute and is the only man in this evening's debate. Um, so first of all, good luck. Uh, Max is a final year law student at Hughes Hall and he is a fervent advocate of the cowgirl position. Fun facts about Max. He has worked for President Obama on his 2012 campaign. He has served under a female president on his college JCR, CR even. And he is matched with President Dunbar on Tinder. <laughs> Max. Ladies and gentlemen, this debate was such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, someone had to speak first, though. Uh, um, but thank you. And to quote my previous speaker, yes, men do literally think they can do whatever they want. Um, <laughs> a perfect example is me saying yes to this speech. <laughs> About an hour ago, I got a call from Charles over there saying, Max, do you want to speak in the debate? I was like, sure, yeah, I'll do it. Definitely. Um, and I would like to make it clear to everyone here that I am completely prepared for this debate. And I'm in no way sort of cobbling a speech together or will in any way try and play for time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, why would I? In this day and age, 2017, there should be really no point in me even standing on proposition. It should be so clear that our side of the debate should win. We live in an era of, you know, strength and women's rights and, you know, Justin Trudeau's and all these great women's causes. <laughs> there really, there's really no need for anyone to speak for 10 minutes on the subject. <laughs> Five? And my opposition speakers, behind every um, man, successful man, sitting in the armchair over there. Can we get a hand for Jess? <laughs> uh, also come out here at short notice. Um, I was gonna cook a more appealing. Every great rolling her eyes. Um, we only need to be on top by looking within this own debating chamber. We look at our illustrious president here, and it's been brilliant. The Cambridge Charity Fashion Show is it. the varsity in the and a certain uh, a certain writer for the tab here, Mr. Mr. Sachin, <laughs> has been embroiled in some sort of scandal, some sort of plagiarism scandal here, which in turn drags law sock, it drags the tab, it draws the Marshall Society, but. Definitely. <laughs> Not this one. Um, and so, returning to the debate at hand, I, in my rush to write this speech, as I came into the union with my girlfriend, we were, you know, quickly. Turn um, to me and just like this. <laughs> the varsity and the and a certain uh, a certain writer for the tab here, Mr. Mr. Sachin. <laughs> has been embroiled in some sort of scandal, some sort of plagiarism scandal here, which in turn drags law sock, it drags the tab, it draws the martial society, but definitely... <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> um, and so, 
returning to the debate at hand, I, in my rush to write this speech, as I came into the union with my girlfriend, we were, you know, quickly left um, to me and just was like, just. Um, and so, returning to the debate at hand, I, in my rush to write this speech, as I came into the union with my girlfriend, we were, you know, quickly left to um, me and just was like, just. Better. Tenem, um, at me and just like this. Tenem, um, at me and just like this. 